Let's look at the problem from this year's Gaokao College Entrance Exam from China. This actually happened yesterday. There are three days of exams, and the language and math are on the first day. Now, here is a probability problem regarding basketball practice. So we have two players, Alice and Bob, taking turns throwing a basketball. The game follows these rules. In the first run, each player has an equal probability, that is half each, to play. The player who successfully makes a basket gets to continue playing, while the other player takes the next turn. Now, Alice has 0.6 probability of hitting the basket with Bob a higher probability, that is 0 0.8. So we are asked for the two questions. What is the probability that the second throw is taken by Bob? And what is the probability that the nth throw is taken by Alice? Now, n, of course, is an integer here, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, we introduce some notation here for x sub n. That is a random variable represents the player at the nth term. We know that for the first term, each have half a probability of playing, right? Could be Alice or Bob with equal probability. So what we are asked to find out is this two quantity here, p when x2 equal b, meaning Bob, or an x equal a, Alice, right? To answer the first question, it's important to use what is called conditional probability, right? So in this game, we know that the probability that the player at x n plus 1 times, depending on the history of it, you know, from the first row and then second and then up to nth. But in our case, according to the rules of the game, the history results doesn't really matter. What matters is the current one. You know, if the current player hits the basket, the player would continue to play. So that is, we have what is called Markov property, that is memoryless. The future state only depends on the current state. For example, xn matters for xn plus 1 and what happened in the past, x1, x2, up to xn minus 1 are irrelevant. All right. So that's important property for this type of random process. We call it a discrete time Markov chain. All right. So we're not going to cover details here. And for those of you who are not familiar with it, do check out related information on the internet. We are given that um, if current player is Alice, you know, she would, with 0 0.6 probability, continue to play for the next round. Right? 0 0.4 probability that going to switch player. Right? So if uh, x equal a, the next one is still a with 0 0.6 probability, we switch the user with 0, 0.4 probability. Now, similarly, if B is playing, Bob is playing, he got a higher chance to remain in the game. And for 0.2% chance, he will switch to Alice. All right? So that's the key. This is very typical Markov chain, right? which may not be covered in high school curriculum in US or even or not even in some of AP classes. Now to answer the question what is the chance that the second player, the second throw, is by Bob? Of course the answer depends on who plays first. If Alice plays first, then we have 0 0.4 chance that the second player is gonna be Bob because Alice can hit the basket with 0 0.6 probability. Now, if Bob plays, then he has a higher probability 0 0.8 to keep playing. They have equal probability to play the first round, right? 
So overall, the chance that the second play is by Bob is going to be half times 0 0.4 plus half times 0 0.8 and the final answer is 0 0.6. That's the probability that Bob plays the second practice. So in general, this is the transition diagram for the Markov chain. In this particular case, Alice would have 0 0.6 chance to continue to play and would have 0 0.4 switch to Bob when it's Bob's turn to play and then would be 0 0.8 chance to continue playing or 0 0.2 switch to Alice. And that's going to be the transition probability here. Now, in usually we represent it with that transition matrix, right, where the row sum here is one, right, and depending on the convention, I see some textbook using the column sum equal to one, that's going to be the transpose of this. But the idea is simple, is representing if the current player is Alice, what is the probability to, to stay versus transition to Bob. Here, for the Bob, transition to Alice versus stay as Bob, right? It's for the 0 0.8 here. So here we can answer the earlier question by using matrix multiplication. So with a symbol here, pi, meaning the probability distribution, initially pi would be 0 0.5 for the first, for the initial state, both players have equal probability of playing the first round, all right? And then with this multiplication, which represents what's the probability that the second term who the player is, yeah? If we get the results here is 0, 4, and 0, 6, of course, we're looking for what is the probability that Bob plays the second round, right? That's going to be 0 0.6, same answer as before, right? But here, we use matrix multiplication form. Now, now for nth row, we're just using the same trick here. It's easier with this probability transition matrix here, P, all right? So in general, for nth row, yeah, the chance that uh, the probability distribution uh, at nth time, pi n, right, is going to be this row vector here, this transpose row vector times this raised to n minus 1's power, right? But how to do matrix power here? That typically we have to uh, diagonalize the matrix, okay? I'm not going to explain the details here, but on the high level, how would you do that? Now, notice that uh, uh, to diagonal a matrix P here, we need to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors. For Markov chain transition matrix, since the row sum is always one, so it's always an eigenvalue of one with eigenvector or, or ones in the, the components. Now, in our case, the other eigenvalue is two, two fifths, right? And the corresponding eigenvectors are one, one, this corresponding to lambda equal to one, and this is the second one, right? And then you, you would have a matrix diagonalization form like that. You know, P can be decomposed as S, which is formed by the two eigenvectors, right? And then this is um, a diagonal uh, with eigenvalues one and uh, two fifths, and this is the uh, inverse matrix of that. So with this, if you do the nth power, it's very easy, and chain them together, and, and since this would cancel, this matrix is the inverse of the other one, so they would cancel when you chain them together, and, and here the power uh, goes here, right? This is gonna be the n minus one's power, right? So let's, let's do that with diagonalization here, and then when you do the power, uh, all, all the things cancel, and then you have the power in the, in the middle here, okay? And then you express it out, and then that's gonna be row vector of the quantity here. We're looking at probability that uh, the term is player A, which is the first component. So the answer here is gonna be, at the nth term, it is Alice who plays, is, is this, this is gonna be the probability, right? Now. Notice that uh, when n is large enough, this probability converges to one third. Okay, so eventually uh, Alice has one third of a chance, and the other guy Bob has two third of a chance because he has a higher 
probability to remain playing, right? Which makes sense, right? So I think uh, this is just uh, one of the uh, college entrance exam from China, and I'm going to post some other problems in subsequent videos. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel.